Okay, so uh, we got Starlink. So if you didn't know what Starlink is, you probably saw the headlines about Russia being pissed at Elon Musk for sending it over to Ukraine to help them keep Wi-Fi on during the war. And that was kind of the jumping off point for Starlink going global. And I'm not saying it was done as like a publicity thing, but Starlink was announced a long time ago. We never saw anything about it. And then all of a sudden, now it's here. So Starlink is a division of SpaceX, and it's basically the same idea as satellite TV, but for Wi-Fi. So typically for your phone and for your house, you rely on either a cell tower or your in-ground fiber cables that are connected to your internet service provider to give you all your Wi-Fi signals or your data signals. Well, instead of doing that, you basically own a satellite dish that hooks up to a satellite, and that's how you get your Wi-Fi instead. Now, there's been a ton of speculation and worry about Starlink in the past. The biggest complaint people had is they're worried that the entire sky was gonna get littered with all these different satellites. It was gonna create a ton of sky pollution and ruin our whole view of the entire galaxy, especially with the amount of satellites people speculated you need to give Wi-Fi access to the entire world. So we got it. We've been testing it out. I'll show you how it works. So the first thing you need to do is you go onto the Starlink website and you enter in your service address. Now the service address is basically the exact same thing as your home address. So if you think about it, there's only satellites in the sky. So if there's too many people that hook up to one satellite, it's basically going to bog down everyone's speeds. So what they're doing is they're basically rolling it out in phases where each service area has its own set of satellites. And then once a certain amount of people are under that service area, no more people can register. Most likely what will happen is if you enter in your service area and it says coming 2023, that means there's already too many people in your area that have connected to that satellite and they're not allowing any more to connect at this time. But if you do have room, it'll basically take you to the next step where you can enter in your credit card information, your entire address and pay for it. Now, as a Canadian, this costs us around $700 to pick it up for basically just the dish. And then it's around 140 a month to actually have the internet service. And then it's another $40 a month Canadian for the portability service, which will We'll talk a lot more about later but we bought it it's here a couple days later and then we'll show you how to set it up so in the box there's not a ton they take all the guesswork out of it to make it really easy for people in rural areas to set up really quick all you have is your dish you have your router you have the cables to connect the two together and then you have a little piece of cardboard that basically says you have a dish, you have a router, and you have two cables, plug it together. Now, in theory, the setup of this is very intuitive and very easy, but we're using this mostly for off-grid purposes, which is something they haven't completely ironed out yet. So Starlink is mostly pushing this for rural areas, and they're showing all the beauty shots of this thing set up on someone's cabin or roof out in the middle of nowhere. So you have this entire length of cable that you run down the side of your house. You then connect this one into the router. You take this other power cable, connect this into the router, put this into the wall, and then you're basically set up. This is your router. This is gonna live inside your house. And then the dish again is supposed to live on your roof. Once you've hooked everything up and you open the app on your phone, you'll actually see your dish on your roof start to move. And that's basically the motors moving to make the dish point directly at the satellite that's set up for that service area. It basically works like any other ISP's Wi-Fi app. You can go in and change the name from Starlink, add a password, add other securities, and check all the devices that are running on your network. So if you're using this in a small town or some area outside your city, that's all the setup you have to do. Once it's on your roof, you can leave it there and you're good to leave it for as long as you want. Like I said, we were using this more in an off-grid and camping scenario, which they haven't quite figured out yet. So let's talk about those issues. So the first thing you need to know is like I said, it's around $140 a month Canadian to use this. And it's $40 a month for what they call portability mode. Now portability mode is basically how you can take your own dish and take it outside of the service area that you previously set up. So the first issue we ran into is this does require to be connected to an outlet, but this is one of the quickest ones we could solve. We just have a little eco phone power supply here that we can connect an outlet to and we just plug it into there to let it run. Now, when you first set this thing up, it actually asks you to point your phone at the sky and scan for obstructions. What that's doing is basically looking at where the dish is in relation to the satellite above you and looking for anything that would get in the way. It's actually really cool to point your phone up in the sky and because of the haptics in your phone, it makes these little like bursting bubble noises whenever it collects all the data it needs and it shows you a 3D map of the service area above you and the obstructions you need to kind of clear out of the way. A lot of people online have been talking about, is this good with trees? If you have trees above you, how's it gonna work? And that was actually our biggest downfall with this is the first time we used this, we went to a treed in area to see how it would work under like a campsite condition. And it, we weren't able to get it to connect and it stayed offline. So it said we were in an area with too many obstructions and we needed to remove it. So then we had to go back to a separate field on a different day to test it out again and see what kind of signals we could get under clear conditions. This is also important to note for people in rural areas that do live under a lot of trees or in a cabin. If there's a lot of trees in the way, you're gonna need to clear them out. But again, if you are in like a camping scenario, because you do have so much cord, if you have your campsite one area, you can put the dish, you know, 100 feet away in a clearing. That's another way to get around it. Okay, now the third issue we ran into is remember, this whole idea is broken down into service areas. So if you buy your dish in one area that you don't have a lot of people around you and you have, you know, great signal with it, 
awesome. But then if you do wanna take it camping and you go into someone else's service area that's already full, which is what we did, you don't get a really good signal. Because think about it, if there's people that are already paying to be in that area, and then you're basically coming into their zone and taking away from them, Starlink is gonna give priority to the people that live in that service area, and then you're kind of like an add-on. So they'll give you some speed so you can connect, but they're not really good. The lowest we got was around 20 megabits per second. But even if you did live in like a small town, honestly, they'd probably be happy with 20 megabits down. Now, these are all issues that we saw coming. We knew we were gonna have issues with powering it. We knew we were gonna have issues with leaving service areas and tree cover and that kind of stuff. The one thing that we didn't take into account was the portability. This is where Starlink is currently lacking the most. Now, like I said, when you put this thing on your roof, the dish is gonna move to calibrate itself in relation to the satellite. Now it uses motors inside it to do that. But when it actually ships to you, the dish is parallel to this base here and that's how it does it so it can pack flat inside the box. Now the issue is when you go offline, the dish no longer moves. So whatever position that dish is currently stuck in, that's how you're gonna have to carry it when you leave. Now just to get around this issue, when we were trying to leave, you can see we actually had to cut a couple holes of this in the Starlink box so the stem could stick out the top. Really not ideal. So the big takeaways. Starlink so far has made it really easy to use, user-friendly product for people in rural areas to get a lot cheaper access to Wi-Fi. Having said that, we bought it as early adopters for plans that they have in the future to make it more off-grid and camping friendly. These are the areas that they're lacking the most. At this point, if I could tell them to focus on one thing moving forward, it's gonna to be to add an offline mode. And that's whenever your dish goes offline, the motors take the dish and turn it back so it's parallel with the stem. That way, whenever you're done camping, you can easily pack it away. Now, it is important to note though that Starlink is currently hiring for probably over 200 positions and all the issues we brought up can either be fixed with software, changing their UI and adding more satellites to service areas. So even though we bought it now as early adopters, I don't think it's gonna hurt us in the long run as I don't think the hardware is gonna change that much. But with the way things are going, the price in these is definitely gonna go up. So if you are interested, I would highly recommend picking up one now while you still can. So that's all I got for now. This is the future for sure. I think we're just a little bit early. All right, peace.